I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We are now in Courtney, and joining me is Brent Hobden here at the Salvation Army Shelter on Pidcock Street. Brent, we are standing in the middle of the new renovated kitchen dining area. Mm -hmm. How much did this renovation cost? Let's start there. Let's start with the price tag. The price tag is a very modest $700,000, give or take a couple thousand. $700,000. That does seem like a modest <laughs> renovation in today's market. Now, how did the idea for this start? Was it on a napkin or was it bigger than that? A little bit bigger than that. We have a team of people working with the Salvation Army who have a passion uh, for making sure that the guests, the people that come into the Salvation Army, have what they need in order to excel at life. Uh, so we were talking in a management meeting about oh, seven or eight years ago. And the idea came up that, that maybe what we need in our shelter is an opportunity to have some program space. Uh, and so it just kind of evolved into that, into you know, what can we do? What would we do with our program space? And uh, the end result, almost seven years later, is, is this new building that we have. Amazing. Now, how, what was the size of this building when you started? Because this is an ad addition, correct? Yeah, so we have about 1,200 square feet of an addition. Okay. Uh, the original size was roughly 6,000 square feet, so now we're up just over 7,000 square feet. Um, okay. and, and we're finding that that should be enough to, uh, to, to address the needs of, of our guests for the immediate future. Okay. Now, over the years, how have you seen those needs change? It's interesting. Uh, and, and that's a very complex kind of a question. Um, throughout the past probably 10 or 15 years now, we've been recognizing that it's not the typical uh, homeless person that's coming into our shelter. We're finding that there's so many people who are just struggling out there. They're recognizing you know, they, they, they've been paying rent all along and they're no longer able to do that. Mm. Uh, we're finding it's a bit more of a transient population that's coming in. We're also finding a significant amount of our guests are coming in with some, some emotional needs, some emotional support needs. Uh, and mm -hmm. so we're looking at different programs that we can bring into the Valley that will help to address those ongoing concerns. Now, are the um, emotional and mental health issues that you're seeing, um, those you're seeing different than say 10 years ago? Is it, do you think it's the pressures of society have shifted a bit? could be the pressures of society. It could also be the fact that it's extremely expensive now for a person to live on their own. Back mm -hmm. 10, 15 years ago, it was possible. Mm -hmm. It was tight, but it was possible. Now it's to the point where it's impossible for somebody to live on their own. Um, and when they're finding out that they're needing to have that, uh, that, that living mate, somebody to, to share the expenses, they're finding that they're not able to cohabitate like they need to be. So we're having to teach them some skills, some coping mechanisms, some, mm. you know, how do you share? How do you break down your bills? How do you, how do you deal with, with those little intricacies uh, that some people find difficult to live with with another person? Now, let's talk about the physical space itself. Um, the building here on Pidcock Street, Describe to us what it is you've added and what you started out with. Let's start with what you started with sure. and what you've added to it. Okay, so we've had 18 beds or, or 12 beds for men and 12 emergency, or sorry, 12 beds for men and six emergency beds for ladies okay. for, for the past number of years. What we've added are six transition units, which are really, really exciting. So we have three transition rooms for ladies and three transition rooms for men. Uh, the transition rooms come complete with a television, a bed, a little sitting area. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a computer, uh, cable television access. Uh, the computer is, is, is really, really important for the programming that we're getting into, the mm -hmm. different life skills that we're teaching. They're, they're in needing of, of going onto the internet to, to do some research and, and to do their homework um, so that we can make sure that they've got what they need to get the job skills and the life skills so that they can go back out into the workplace, secure housing, um, and then secure that, that roommate or whoever it is that they mm -hmm. need in order, to, uh, in order to thrive. Now, I heard recently also that like many forms that you would have to fill out for government are all online now and you have to have computer access to be able to do that. So this would be another added bonus to having those computers. Absolutely. And those forms that you're talking about can be a huge barrier for a lot of our Absolutely, guests. Yes. I mean, most people find it a little daunting when you're going online trying to figure out exactly how to <laughs> fill out a form. I do. <laughs> right. Revenue uh, Canada, say no more. <laughs> right. Um, we can use the shelter as, as a permanent fixed address for people who want to vote. I mean, so many different advantages oh. for having a fixed address, for having okay. um, a, a, an email address, for getting their bills electronically sent to them. So right. many different reasons as to why um, being able to get online, being able to search 
uh, the internet is, is very important to our shelter guests now. Now, you have the emergency beds, and the mm -hmm. emergency beds, those are for, those are year round or just for emergency weather situations? Uh, those are year-round beds. Year -round so beds. we have the 12 okay. men's beds and the six beds for ladies. Okay. In addition to that, during inclement weather from uh, November 1st all the way through until March 31st, um, the BC government opens up the EWR program, which is extreme okay. weather response. Okay. Uh, and that's in effect now. So we have another okay. 15 beds that we're allowed to open mm. up into our shelter. So okay. we have a potential of having 36 people in our shelter at any given time now. Oh, okay. And the area that we're standing in, this is the new dining and kitchen? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and that's pretty exciting as well. In the past, we've only been able to feed a few people, so we'd have to have all, all of our meals kind of in rotation. The ladies would actually eat in, in the ladies' lounge. The men would get together in smaller groups. Now we're able to bring pretty much everybody together uh, mm. and, and have a communal meal. And, and I, I think it, it, it helps to build that, that feeling of community, of, of togetherness, um, and, and, and build that, that friendship level. Um, now you're back to the transition rooms. Um, when somebody comes in, first they would, what do they have to do to qualify for, uh, to be eligible for a transition room? And that's such a great question, Mary Ruth. We have a really good group of nonprofit organizations here in town. Uh, it's called a hero, and we rely on the hero to give us recommendations on who they believe would be the best candidates to go into these rooms. And then we oh, work okay. with the other departments okay. within the Salvation Army as well, mm -hmm. through our community and family services, uh, through our parent-child resource center that we have at the church, and through the various different things that are happening here at the shelter. So we take all that information, we put it together, and we make a very informed decision as to who would best fit into these new programs. So it's not just a place for somebody who can come and, and live for three months. There's some very, very strong programming that goes behind it. Okay. Our desire is, is that that person is going to enter into the transition unit program, okay. get all the skills, whether it's life skills or, or technical skills or job skills or resume, whatever it is that they need on right. an individual, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, get those skills and abilities, and then we'll help them secure um, living quarters outside of the shelter after you know, six months or a year or 18 months, whatever it is they need okay. in order to, to build that, that job bank skills or life skills. And okay. then we'll help them out into the community to secure uh, their own unit or their own, their own home. Right. And then we'll go into those homes and help them for an additional six or 12 or 18 months, whatever really? it is that they're gonna need in order to make sure that the homes that they're in Wow. Their bills are being paid. They're still yeah. able to connect with, with community. They're still able to get the health and mental right. and dental and, and, and whatever it is that they need in order to, uh, to lead that life of, that, that, that gives back, that, that, right. that quality of living. So, um, there, so there's no time frame. No time frame at all. That's awesome. Yes, and it's also fairly unique. Because that removes a massive pressure right there. It removes a pressure on, on the on guest them. that's yes. coming in, yes. but it also removes a pressure on us. All of a sudden, we're not in that point of saying, okay, we've only got three months or we've only got six months to work with this right. person. We've got as much time as it needs for that person to get from where they are to get to where that person wants to be. Right. The very first thing we do is we talk about goals. Right. So we find out what their goals are, what they want in life, what they oh, want to do, okay. and we do whatever we possibly can to help them reach those goals. Awesome. So depending on the individual who's coming in, they might only need your help for six months here, and then they'd be ready to transition into their own place, or somebody might need a, quite a bit longer, and it doesn't matter, you're here no matter what. That's the idea. Okay. Yeah. Now we're looking at probably a minimum of six months. Okay. Uh, if it was less than six months, what we've been doing in the past is we would try to get them into a home on their own, and we would okay. go into their place right. and help them with whatever skills it is that they're needing, if it's only gonna be such a short time. But yeah, if it's six months or longer. So. Brent, what is an example of some of the programs that you offer? Does it include cooking skills or mathematical skills, like basic accounting, balancing a checkbook? Yeah, and, and all of the above would be an oh, easy okay. answer. But it's pretty exciting. We do things like uh, certified forklift training. Oh. We do first aid, uh, okay. certified first aid training, um, budgeting, and, and, and all of the different life skills um, that we need, including anger management, okay. uh, in, including you know how, how to healthy lifestyles, healthy boundaries, uh, how to get along with people. Uh, it's not just a case of, of management, anger management skills. It's, it's what do you do when you get into situations where you need to learn how to back off just a little bit and how to defuse um, potentially hostile or trigger points. 
Um, we have some very capable people that have, uh, have come onto staff over the last couple of years. Oh, and we're okay. very excited about those new programs that we're offering. Awesome. Um, what would you say to the public regarding continued support for the Salvation Army? No, and that's such a great question, Mary Ruth. We've just come through our biggest fundraising opportunity with Christmas. Most people think that the need is it's gone until next Christmas, and that's just not the case. Uh, we have a food bank that, that we rely on. Most of the people here in the shelter look to the food bank when they're finished in the shelter. They go back into their homes and they rely upon that. All of the programs and services that we operate through the shelter are paid for by the Salvation Army. And so we're relying on donations to keep coming in and to help us with these programs. So if you're able to support us, you can drop into any of our three thrift stores here in town. You can drop into the church or into our community family services office, or you can give us a call at 250-338-5133, and we'd love to hear from you. Brent, thank you so much. And uh, we, it's an amazing, beautiful new space. Congratulations. Thanks so much, Mary Ruth. Really, really appreciate your support. You're watching Where You Live. We'll be right back.